Well, what our camp has learned for sure over the winter and in other camps that I've been in that the overwhelming feeling of people in our community is compassion and that they want to help us. And there's always some, you know, just like every group, there's always a few who, you know, are the haters or however you want to say it. It's, you know, they just have to make their views known in some way, whether it's, you know, revving up their engine as they drive by or yelling, get a job or, you know, even throwing things at the camp has happened in the past. Luckily, like only twice in the whole three years I've been camping there. But you always get those people. And uh, it's just reminds me of middle school kind of where there's always one kid that everybody trips him in the hall or you know it's just the people that are bullying really others and um, most kids are just walking down the hall sitting in the class but there's always a couple that just kind of you know what do you say ruin it for everybody so uh, that's always going to be there but as long as you keep making spaces where the expectation is to treat people with respect People get it after a while, and you know, I've seen even people that didn't get it at first start to get it after being in that environment. So, get to know people on the streets. If you walk a certain way every day and you see someone there, say hi to them once, you know. And um, every single person on the streets is the same as your neighborhood. In every house, everybody's different. They all live in the same neighborhood, but they're not all the same people. And some neighbors are not as fun as others but you know there's so many there's a lot of wisdom out there and a lot of um, just unseen virtues you might say in people that you just don't see from the outside necessarily so give yourself a chance it's like smelling the roses you know talk to a homeless person you'll learn something um, it was winter. We had had camps, of course, in the past that got people through the winter, Whoville most recently. And, um, you know, I started out, I just brought coffee and cigarettes <laughs> and try. I thought, at least for this winter, I just want to help a little suffering. And that's, it may be only a few people, but I'm going to do everything I can. So then we got the idea to make this really, truly safe camp that had some expectations. It was a working camp. and. You know, people were kind of getting on board with that and starting to take responsibilities in the camp, just doing dishes or taking trash out, all those things that you have to do, you know, to live. And um, we just kind of traveled around all winter and have got this group now that's so closely bonded and wants to move forward and do more out in the community. And so spring is here. We've survived the winter, which was very mild, blessedly, compared to the winter before. And um, I don't know, we've been through the fire now and it's ready, time to start growing just like the plants. So we've got, we want to partner with other groups who are doing all kinds of things from planting trees to um, providing food and just, now, um, some of the people in our camp actually have jobs or here and there get jobs and they're really anxious to get out and do something even if they don't get paid for it. They just want to be doing something. And um, there's a lot of skills. I mean, this older guy that, um, you know, has some issues with alcohol. He's just been so proud of being able to be part of this little painting party, you know, and it just makes me realize that every guy, every person, because we have women too now in our camp, uh, can, can do something. And maybe we have to make something for them to do. But there's lots of things that need to be done that are simple and um, just doing things as a group, as our camp has, has really shown that and helped a lot of people step up to a level of usefulness that they weren't having in the past. People need to feel useful. People need to know, hey, I'm valued here because this is what I do and people like it, kind of, so. Support of people around them um, makes a huge difference because everybody in the camp talks about how, and I can just see it having come along over the winter, you know, they're just a little bit more of a will to do the things they want to do. And that just leads to the next step and the next step, and that's what I've seen. Beautiful thing. It's an inspiring thing. It keeps me going. Um, 
Yeah, I am a cheerleader of sorts, I think, and I get a, I really encourage them when things look bleak and remind them that we've been, we've had troubles before, but it always got better and, you know, even just sort of Pollyanna things like that, but people need to hear it. And another thing that I really feel strongly about is I originally did the coffee and the cigarettes thing. Um, and any time that I give someone money or anything like that, I mean, it's, it has to be without any strings at all. You know, you can just show them, wow, this is kindness, this is what it feels like. This is the ways you can get it, maybe more easily than you've been trying to get it. And the community really helps with that because knowing people care about you is what everybody wants. That's why I have to do something too. I can't just say all this, you know. I mean, it only means something if it, something happens from it. Well, these are my friends now, you know, it's like, it's like anybody really, if, if people can know what unconditional love feels like, like, you make mistakes, everybody makes mistakes, whatever they are, I've found these people that I love no matter what, kind of like my kids, a lot, a couple of the young guys have really reminded me of my boys who are just wonderful, wonderful people, but those were somebody's boy. All these people were someone's precious child who was gonna go far, you know, and they all still can. Because every time you get in that position where you really need that little break and you deserve it, you know, because you've, you're not a bad person, you just made a mistake. But when you don't get that break, then it's harder the next time maybe to get it. And the more of those times that pass by that that break just isn't there for somebody, how depressing, you know, how tough would it be to get up the next day and say, okay, you know, I'm going to do it better this time when you're all by yourself and you feel like you're all alone in the world. I mean, I don't know. I was fortunate to grow up with a mother who said, it doesn't matter what you do, I'll always love you, you know, and I'll be disappointed. I might be mad at you, but nowhere, no matter what, I'll always love you and I'll always support you. And that's what I tell people, some of them, you know, that I feel that way about you and just know there's somebody out here who does. And it seems to make a difference. <laughs> so I have to say that I didn't make any of this up. You know, the, our camp did not just come out of nowhere. There's been so many camps and so many models, you know, OBE and the different rest stops to see how people could live together. Uh, outdoors, so to speak, and um, they've all had varying degrees of success in my opinion, but the thing that I find about those places who are doing wonderful work, and there's many people who fit in with this model, but it's more a social service model. It's more a thing of, okay, we'll get, you know, we'll give you these resources and you have to jump through a certain amount of hoops, and I understand that model and I think there's a really good place for it, but I believe for some people who are very poverty stricken and have maybe been out a long time and have issues they need to work on or whatever it is, just, an ind just a wild and carefree spirit, that those people are valuable too in this world in so many ways and they should be able to live somewhere with dignity even if it's in a tent and not be rousted around and what we've proved for this winter is that there's small groups that can do this so have other safe rest stops that are not restrictive in the rules and can respect people's right to have a beer at the end of the day and that they don't have a problem that disrupts the rest of the camp or the community that's how it is in the real world and everybody deserves that can that can be responsible and handle it so to speak um, so yeah, um, there's people out on the streets that still need shelter and that's kind of my primary thing. However, within that, having crews that can go out and partner with other uh, 501c3s or other organizations and do service work, get to partner with people in the community that know that they can get some day workers that are trusted here, um, micro loans perhaps for some folks that make jewelry and if you know they could get money to build a little cart then they could sell it and have an income I mean those kind of informal economy things are really important to me because people want to do that people want to do something and earn their way and so here's another way that they could do it
biggest thing that I'm having trouble with because I've come from, you know, social service backgrounds and that kind of thing uh, in the past is um, remembering, which luckily the people in the camp just automatically suggested that they start writing some things for our proposals that, you know, the language comes from them. There are people there, you know, one woman said, hey, I can string words together. Another guy said, I'm a really good proofreader. And, you know, I mean, not everybody in the camp has those skills, but we're utilizing each person's strength to make this get off the ground. And boy, there's, we're going to be a presence. Also trying to coordinate with Portland and Tucson, I have to say, Occupy Tucson, John McLean down there, I think he's really on the same track that we are as far as the dignity and respect model first and not so much the social service and I'm pretty sure Ibrahim in Portland. I haven't spoken to either of them so I can't say how they think but I really want to go visit both of those guys and this, this can be done anywhere in this country. No, to the extent the city and, you know, even the county are trying to, you know, get it out of downtown, keep it from showing, um, you know, that whole mentality of, if you know, from the people who are outside saying, if I can, you know, hide well enough, they won't bother me. People have come to our camp and suggested, oh, I know a really good place and they won't ever find us. And say, yeah, but what we're doing involves being out in the open, saying, you know, why should we have to hide? We just need a nice little spot, some parking lot somewhere or something, you know, a field. And uh, we can make it happen. Solar, we have the porta potties. I mean, we're thinking about all the steps to be good neighbors. And most of our neighbors have thought that we were very good neighbors everywhere we've moved, so. The routine with the city most of the winter was that we would land in a spot that we had figured out was either city, county, or ODOT land usually. And um, at least with the city, we'd land on their property and then they'd maybe come out in a day or two and maybe give us some citations, but say you have to leave in 24 hours. And we'd say, okay. and then. They would come back, maybe we wouldn't leave, and they'd come back and post a sign finally that says no camping, and maybe give a few more citations and say, okay, now you really have to leave. And we'd say, okay, and then uh, we wouldn't, and then they would come and put up a no trespassing sign, and on that day they would hand out little flyers that told us the day that they, the final day. And so that's the way, and we would move out, we would begin moving that day. And, the, you know, most of the time we move in a day. Uh, most recently, just in a few hours, we're getting so good at it. It's always been a cordial thing. No, we clean up really well after us and all trash that was already there. And um, so it's just been like a little game. And they say, why do you keep going to places that you can't be? And I always say, well, why can't you tell us where we could go that we could be? <laughs> so, you know, it's that kind of conversations with the police. Everybody's polite, and, but here's the reality. We're not leaving. We're going to go somewhere else, and we'll see you there. <laughs> and so um, sometimes it's been only a matter of three or four days before we had to move for various reasons. But recently we've been at our current site over two weeks, which has been a real blessing. So 20, at, le at least 20 spots since last September, with anywhere from 15 to 30 people sometimes. So, and a kitchen. <laughs> well, that is an issue because of course during the winter, it's not only wind and rain and cold, but mud. And so um, there's just logistics to it in that time of the year when you can see on the weather forecast, like, hey, it's going to be really nice Wednesday. Can we wait till then, please? And we've definitely negotiated with EPD and ODOT about uh, extending our time past really severe weather. So they've been pretty reasonable about that. Otherwise, our goal has been to be very um, I don't want to use the word compliant, really, but respectful of the police and what they're telling us. So uh, we just move however we, the best way we can. And it's been a mess sometimes, but it got better every single time. And our camp got better every single time because it, people would change a little bit and we'd get new people. And it's been a real progressive upward progress. <laughs> yeah. It is really hard on people, especially if for any reason at that time they're ill or if they, you know, have any kind of foot 
injuries that just make mobility is a problem. Uh, a couple times somebody's been in jail and we didn't really even know where they were, but we knew that they'd come back, so we took their stuff too. And to the extent that the a really able-bodied uh, people do a lot for the themselves and the others that can't do their stuff themselves. It's really a it's a long day and tiring day and cold and wet and all that kind of stuff. So, and the emotional thing of just uh, leaving has been hard on people, which I try to give even more support during the <laughs> moves. And there's others. Oh, it's not just me. You know, I mean Jan and Steve and Brother Charles and. There's a whole crew of people that make it happen.